Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now, in the last episode, we set up our fledgling oil industry by adding a new cargo terminal in the north and setting up the Shoreline Company to begin oil extraction on the coast. We also moved the High Capacity High School closer to our residential district and adjusted some of the values for our realistic population mod to be... Well, more realistic, I guess. We also added a public library to the area just to really encourage that education boost so we can get more educated workforce out into our industries. Today, the plan is to grow our industries and our population by a considerable amount. Hopefully the biggest growth we've seen so far. I'm aiming to actually grow by about four to 5,000 population if possible, which means all of our services will really be under strain and we can then react to any problems that arise. That's how I like to do my planning. Before we do, I've got a quick time lapse building out the final gap in our suburbs area. So let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, kicking off the time lapse, we're up in the shoreline area, the oil industry area, and I've just redrawn the road to make it follow the contour lines of the terrain a little bit better. So it's a lot more squiggly, a lot more natural, but it's also just a road where we have oil drills. And I wanted to space them out a bit more evenly between each other. They each have a radius, and I wanted to make sure that their radii weren't overlapping with each other. So spacing them out by one and a half radius, I guess, or whatever. Just make sure that nothing was overlapping. We're using, utilizing the space a lot better. It means that the drills can stay there a lot longer before they actually tap the resource completely. So I just wanted to update people on that, that the area is looking a little bit better now. So back down here, we are in Robin Heights. It's currently called Robin Hills. We're gonna be calling it Robin Heights going forward. Uh, just because of the towering buildings, of course. And I just wanted to make sure that we're using as much of the space as possible we could for residential living inside of the six lane road and the four lane kind of outer arterial road. So we have all the space to utilize. So we're trying to just make sure we have good zone coverage of it, you know, so just bringing those roads out with zones either side all the way right up to the edge and then trying to link cul-de-sacs together or create new road junctions where we lead back out to the four lane. So that, that's basically just what I'm doing here. I do delete some pathways. I'm sorry. I know. Um, what can I say? I just don't like them. <laughs> But, um, no, I was actually trying to pay attention to a few of the comments that were saying, like, yep, yeah, you know, the pathways are probably a bit more important in the suburbs, in the cul-de-sacs, that makes sense. But out here, they're just going to be walking along the city streets, which is totally fine. However, using this median road, right, we have this median block. The trees and a little bit of concrete are in the middle. So people can't walk over it and cross over, and cars can't cross over. If you're on one side, you can't get to the other side. You have to follow the rules of the road to take a junction, find a... a cul-de-sac, a U-turn, or something like that, right? But you can't do it in the middle of the road anywhere. So because of that, later in the episode, I'll be putting in some um, specific crosswalks that you can actually just put place in there using the node controller. Uh, and that way, just guaranteeing that if you come out your door and you wanted to turn left or whatever, but you couldn't because you had to go all the way right and around, like everyone's just going around in the same way because they're on that side of the road. Now they just have a, they'll have a few more points where they have crosswalks before the actual junctions. I feel like I did a horrible explanation of that. Anyway, you can just see zoning all that stuff is all good. Just adding now across from the yoga area, a little extra park, a little basketball court, just the little tiny things just to pad out the areas a little bit. I wanted to add a few more parks as well. So I'll be working on that too in just a moment. Don't know if it's weird having the roads brushing up against each other so much like that. I think it kind of looks cool, but I don't know if that's normal or not. And then obviously where it made sense, I would try to create new junctions on those four lane roads by joining them in. But you just didn't want to put them too close to each other, so you had to make sure that they're evenly spaced out. So this is just, I'm just dropping a fairly big park in the middle of one of the most high dense streets. So I was just moving some of the buildings, I didn't want to lose the population totally, so I just moved the buildings out to the, another part and then just carved out this space nicely for a park just to fit in there. And that's just more central to everybody, they're a little bit happier with where that placement is. The buildings have little issues when you move them around like that, though. Sometimes placing them on new zones, a new building tries to pop up in its place, so it can be a bit messy. So here we are building out the final estate of the suburbs, uh, and this place is going to be called Butler. It was just generated as a name, but I actually like the name. I think it's kind of cool. So I, the idea for this place was to make it like kind of fancy. Um, I don't know if we can really do that in the game, but it'd be cool to have like a more wealthy area. Maybe we can set some policies and stuff to encourage that in the future. But the idea was like, yep, this area is at the very north of the town. It's next to the river. It's near the bay, the coast. So maybe it's a bit more of an affluent area, you know. Um, so effectively, just doing what I do, 
kind of semi-random, but a bit more orderly this time. I knew that they'd need a little bit of commercial shops on the top. I left a little bit more space for that because I thought we want to create that noise pollution buffer between the two. So that's definitely going to be the idea here. Um, so, yep, just joining the communities together so that people can kind of get out a different way if they want to, if they don't just want to go into the arterial road. There's another way to get into Victoria Square if they need to. Although, thinking about it, maybe it might, might be better to do that one way in the future. I'll have to think about it. Because it can, well, basically, spoilers, it's going to get very congested, actually, so we'll see how that works out. Alright, so just placed down a couple parks, a car park. I don't know what I was thinking at the time when I put the car park down straight away. I think I was getting ahead of myself because it doesn't look very good and I think I remove it later. So we'll see about that, like even during the time lapse. Uh, but yeah, just zoning everything just to get a feel of like where all these houses are going to be and how they're going to pop up and then deciding like where services should go. So decided to use, because it's a more affluent area, a nicer area, these noise pollution cancelling roads, they look really nice. They have like trees on either side so just obviously people like them a little bit better and they have that benefit of the noise pollution thing but there's no difference otherwise i don't think people can still park on the sides i think that could be the difference actually sorry that i don't know i i don't know yeah i'll have to check on that they might actually be able to not park there anyways so we've put down a child healthcare center so that's going to improve birth rates and then I put down an elementary school. So I'm just reordering them because I think the elementary school is smaller would work better on the bend, especially if we just push it forward a little bit. And I didn't show it in the time lapse, but I actually like color in that little bit of pavement there just to make it look a bit more uniform. And then next to it is the child healthcare center. So that's gonna improve birth rates, hopefully kickstart this little community a bit. Uh, so we get nice, well-educated children and lots of them. All right, so Butler Hills was just the name that was generated when we created the district. I thought it'd be nice as well. Just give them a couple tennis courts, a couple basketball courts. Uh, near where I live, there's a place like that where it's just like four or five of these next to like the shops uh, in a row. So I just kind of thought that would be a cool uh, place for activities for people to, to go hang out and also just raise the land value of the area a little bit more. Even though I know they are stacked together, it still, still kind of works. Uh, so I was just kind of feeling out using the different objects and, and buildings and stuff, what, what else could we use? There was a community pool, which I thought would be cool to have near the, um, uh, the elementary school and the child healthcare center, because it's like, oh, it's like, it is sort of like a holiday destination, I suppose, but I also thought, like, that's where they could go learn swimming and stuff, you know, like the kids. So next to it, I think I have a little cafe there, but I end up rearranging that because I don't know if I just skipped over it yeah I place a sauna so that's a sauna next to the car park and I just put another car park down so I was like yeah okay there's too many car parks and the sauna would make a lot of sense if it was near the pool because you know you could join the two together kids are playing in the pool adults go to the sauna whatever you know for a bit of a break a bit of a relaxation and then they have their car park next to it they have the cafe the sidewalk cafe is right across from it as well Now there's a little gap left here, so I wanted to just to populate it with something because of the way the pathway worked. Um, so basically just put down some trees manually, and then I found that small basketball court kind of park thing that's in the, it's part of a tourism DLC, I think. Parks, I can't remember what DLC, I'm so sorry. I'm so ill-informed sometimes. But it's part of one of the DLCs, and uh, yeah, it's called the Tiny Playground. So the only way I could get it in there was by rotating it around and then kind of joining it onto the path. But then it was saying the road was, Obviously, it wasn't connected, so if you moved it close enough to the road, it still kind of counts with anarchy. So it's like, oh, okay, just get it pretty close, and even if it's separated by a path, people should be able to use it just fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The small city of Swords certainly is beginning to fill out. We have our last little district that's after being plugged with roads and services, and we have to let time play before the people start to move in. I thought we'd like to see that together, but also... Our industry shoreline is on the precipice of an upgrade, so I thought we should hold hands for support and see that together, because I have no idea what I'm going to do when we get new buildings and stuff. I haven't really ever, ever leveled up oil industry before, so I thought we should do that together. Also, we have our residential urban dense district down here, renamed from Robin Hills to now Robin Heights. I just think that makes a bit more sense. And we're going to be waiting for this to fill out too. So this is going to be sort of competing for population with the new Butler district, and both will hopefully be filling out over time, so I'm expecting a rapid rise in population like I stated at the beginning of the episode. So, let's just get to it. Let's see how it all shakes out and see what we gotta do to accommodate all these new people. So we're currently on 
13,747. We're growing at about 130 per week. We've got reasonable demand for commerce and industry. If I just have a look at some newly zoned areas, we have new commercial areas here, new residential all here, and a bit more new commerce over in this area as well. So this is going to be low density commercial. I just thought it'd be nice to get us started, to get the ball rolling with some low density, even though it is a little strange, right? Because once you build up some low density, you're ultimately then just going to delete it and put in high density. It doesn't naturally move from one to the other, unfortunately. So because of that, you'll lose the kind of jobs that were in there and the, you know, the bonuses that were kind of applied by it leveling up. But nevertheless, it should be a, a good metric of how much demand there is as we start to see this kind of grow and grow and grow. And then we can say, okay, we're used to kind of traffic flow in this area. We're used to seeing where the people are going. Now we can really say, let's bring it up to, uh, to high density and so on and so forth. God, that music is very triumphant here at the beginning. I'll just turn it down a little bit. Anyway, we have our electricity grid hooked up. It just hasn't let time play yet, by the way, in case you're wondering about that. And, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. There's not really much else to catch up on. So let's just let time play. Boom. Lovely warmth. Saunas make the winter more bearable, says Robert Young, who lives... Oh, there he is. He's oh, look at it, just tweet tweeting away. Where are you going? Resides at the Oriental Residence. That's an interesting name for a house. Going to the convenience store. So you live over here, and you've been walking over here. Well, it's not that bad. It's a nice little walk. It's a nice weather. Good day. Ooh, I've forgotten my services. Forgot to put down water. So let's just connect that up really quickly. Just pause time again. And we'll bring this down here and just connect up the roads. We'll bring it down into the estate itself. We should take a closer look at that estate. I don't think I really would have done it justice just by flying over it in the time lapse. So we'll have a look now in a second and see what this place is all about. That's pretty much water done, right? There's a tiny little pocket there, maybe. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. And then this bit. All right, looking good. So let's just take a little quick gander at the area. So we have our community pool. Someone's, people are in there already. Look at it. They're loving it. And then we have our sauna. You know, you just want to cool out. Let the kids go play in the pool. Wow. The steam is kicking off in there. <laughs> Then we have our child healthcare center, basically just a place where people go to <laughs> It increases birth rates, I'm only joking, but you could, you, could, you could believe that that could go on in there next to the sauna, you know, things get a little spicy. We have our elementary school across from that, of course. We have our tennis courts, our basketball courts, and we have our first few stores now people are beginning to move in. Nice. And of course then, just to have a look in the area, just generally, I meant to say, we have um, some nice parks, we have our little cafe and restaurant, we have our nicer trees, we have pathways connecting cul-de-sacs, can you believe it? I certainly can't. All right, and power is dipping. Ah, power has not been connected, that's the issue. Let's just connect that across. All right, so power should be okay. I have been thinking about maybe installing an oil power plant over at Shoreline, seeing as it actually does import oil off map, but if you have it, they'll take it from your storage buildings, I believe. So it kind of makes sense to put it somewhere near here, and aesthetically, I think it could kind of look good. Um, but I am reserving a lot of this space for future industry. We have high industry demand. If we were to take a look at our population demographics, we currently still have 15% unemployment. That's just an education problem more than anything. There are a thousand higher education jobs available, um, but our lower education people don't have anywhere to work. So if we pop down some fresh industries, that'll open up a lot more job opportunities for them. So I'm planning on doing that. Just don't want to get to it just yet. Sort of feel out how we're getting along with the population. Let's just speed up time ever so slightly. We could also take a look now at how this area is doing itself. So we are currently at 480 resources out of 500. We have enough workers, so that's totally fine. We're making petroleum, so we have our py pyrolysis plant here. Our petroleum is then stored in this small warehouse. I think I was saying actually that I should just upgrade or change this road to be a two-way road. I don't think it necessarily needs to be one way. I'm not sure what benefit that's really giving us at this point. We can always switch it in the future if we need to. Let's just let them go whatever way they want, yeah? Well, when I say that, it just means that if you pull out of here, now you can just go along and go straight in here. It just seems to make a little bit more sense. But also, let's just change some of the junction rules. Get rid of that. It's not needed. I think I was seeing some extra traffic lights that were placed around. I can't remember where it was, actually, thinking about it, but I thought it was there. I guess you don't see it unless you're quite zoomed in. Yeah, let me just zoom in one more second. Sorry to be hopping around all over the place like this. Uh, here, yeah, let's just get rid of that and we'll see how it kind of pl shakes out, you know I like to put in traffic lights when you've got a problem rather than before uh, Here as well 
All right, cool. Nice. All right, people are starting to move in already. We have our first household popping up here. The Smith residence already on its way to become level two. Love and life. Five uneducated adults living in here. We've got another one popping up in this area. Sinking into the terrain for whatever reason. The houses kind of pop up before people move in. So no one's moved into this one yet. And then you'll see them driving in from off map. Or they can get the intercity bus actually and come in that way. All right, nice, all looking good. All right, well, speed of time, money is looking okay. Hey, we did it. Shoreline has reached level two. So an efficiency bonus, a reduction to pollution, and then the following buildings. A petrochem plant, small oil drilling rig, household plastic factory. So that's going to be a unique factory, I think. Oil industry barracks and crude oil storage cavern. Interesting. Oh, yeah, so I just kind of assumed that um, there wasn't any storage for it because we just used a standard warehouse, but I guess you don't unlock it till... Oh, no, we did have a small one. Okay, never mind. All right, let's take a look at what we got. This will give people jobs. So we'll head over to the oil industry tab. Just go back down to times one speed for now. Almost about to break 14,000 population, which is good to see. So there's the barracks. There's our current oil pump, and now we have the small oil drilling rig. So production rate, 3,200 units per week, whereas this was capped at 2,400. But we're actually starting to see that we're carving through it so, so quickly already, because it was at 2,400, and now this particular pump is already down to 1,460, because that is just the natural amount of oil just being drilled and removed, so there's nothing more to use, basically. So once this dries up, so to speak, then we can put more industry in this area. It's actually some ore around here, actually. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, we can put some more industry, build a new estate out this way, and that'll kind of serve as the northeastern part of the town, you know? Because we have this big industry down here for people that a lot of people basically go to, and that puts strain on traffic, obviously, a lot. But if we kind of just now let traffic go around this way and all up here, importing goods on the main road up here, and then people from these estates can go work out here, hopefully, right? That would be the ideal. So that's uh, kind of the plan. Cool. Heavy industry. Pretty cool. Actually, just really quickly before we build, what do we need for the next tier? So we're going to need 200 workers and 1,500 resources. Easy. All right. We'll be there in no time. So a new oil drilling rig. Oil sludge pyrolysis. And now we have our new petrochemical plant. So instead of making petrol, we'll be making plastic. Oh, nice. I thought you had to refine it twice, but I guess not. In fact, this is inaccurate. There we go. So yeah, oil into either petrol or plastic, and then that can go into a unique factory, and there you go. So simple enough, right? Petrochemical, petrochemical plant takes oil and uses fluid catalytic cracking to produce oil fins that are the basis for polymer and oil gummers. Oil gummers, never heard of that before. Used in products like plastics. The processing building requires oil to produce oil special good, plastic. All right, so let's see how big it is. Not too big, actually, not too bad. Could probably put it down somewhere here in a bit. I think we'll just go with another pyrolysis plant first. And actually, might as well get ahead of the problem. We're going to need more electricity. So let's build an oil power plant. So that's something we unlocked just recently. Take advantage of natural oil and use it to power your city. It creates heavy pollution. So we could build it somewhere out here. Hmm. Actually, just as well, really quickly. Let's see. Bonk. So that's where the oil currently is. So what we'll do is build the extractor buildings first. They kind of take priority, right? Because we have to clear the area of oil, and then we can build out further and further industry. So maybe we'll start here. Is this... Yep, we've got zoning on both sides. I would say go all the way out like that. Creates a bit of a discrepancy in the terrain, but don't worry. We shall smoothen that out. It's no problems. In a way, these should kind of be dirt roads, I feel, because it's more like we're just go. We're sending something out to go extract oil, and not. Oh my god! Not actually building any industry on it, dude. Can I get rid of the rock? No. Well, I guess. I guess not. I know I can do this, right? Okay, we'll just do it. I'll just commit to it. So let's turn off. We want props selected. And then just grab them like so. There we go. Got them. All right, looking nice. So maybe we should switch it to dirt road just for the aesthetics. Uh, let's get that thicker rig. There we go. Small oil drilling rig. I'll pop it on that side if we can. So that's the the edges there. So yeah, that should cover both areas. Areas. 
excuse me, pretty well. All right, and just to smoothen out the land around it, just to look a little bit nicer if we can, can we? Let's do brush strength, str make a stronger brush. And then just for the aesthetics of it, I just want to see what it looks like as a sort of a dirt slash gravel road. So we'll just do an upgrade here. Hmm. Not entirely convinced. Can we not upgrade this little segment? It seems to be connected to multiple junctions. That's fine. Should we leave it like that? You guys can let me know. If you'd rather it be industrial road, let me know. But it's just because these things are going to basically... Um, this is just a very shaped road specifically for the drills, right? I'm not actually building industry on it yet. But when we do start zoning, then I'll want a more, obviously, industrial roads that are going to be utilizing more traffic. These are only ever going to have one truck kind of come out of them. One or two, maybe, and then go back, that kind of thing. So not too heavy. Um, all right, so we have our little chemical plant thing there. So let's just get another one and start inviting more people for jobs. So oil sludge, sludge pyrolysis. Oh, there's actually a little drill there. Let's get rid of that one. Don't think it's quite needed because the circle of this, I'm pretty sure, overlapped. Sorry that I'm taking so long with this. Did it? Eh, it's right on the edge, but yeah, let's just get rid of that one. It's done its job. All right, so oil sludge pyrolysis. So, it's by four. Okay. So let's try this. So one, two, three, four. So about there. And we just stack them next to each other. Just looks a bit better that way. The fence looks like it sort of connects in a way. Looks like it's part of one bigger unit, so almost. In fact, you could probably do that, and maybe we could fill this with something just to look a bit cooler. Because so we could look up maybe, you know, props, uh, go to industry. Bonk. Sorry, that's not props. This is props. Industrial props. There you go. As you know, you could kind of just decorate the area with... Um, Cargo containers, oil, things like that. That could look kind of cool. Like, uh, yeah, even just boxes and whatever. I could spend a long time doing this. I don't want to spend too long. But people have mentioned, like, oh, could you do some beauty building? Even just, like, a little bit. So here you are. <laughs> this is what you're missing. Yeah, I've had to look through these a few times. I actually use them when I'm in thumbnails and stuff. So I could make some tanks that sit at the back here a bit more uniformly. I didn't really see anything that looked like specifically like, oh yeah, oil, you know. But tanks, I suppose, can kind of be like that. Anyway, just a little bit, you know, just fills it out, makes it look like there's something going on there. <laughs> As there is. Uh, so 55 out of, yeah, there we go. So there's no workers in this one yet. Uh-oh, not good. It'll probably take a while, but I'm sure it'll fill up. Give it some time. They have their road access. So what about the junction here, then? Just kill that junction for the moment. Don't think we need a stop sign. Until this place starts getting really busy, I think we're okay. This is after taking on some workers, so that's good to see. And how are we filling out now, population-wise? Butler Hills is starting to grow. I've seen some little arrows. We have our commercial district line is totally full up. So the, the need for commerce is definitely strong. The need for commerce up here, super strong as well. All right, we're coming up to nighttime. And then, of course, this place is filling out too. So just all zoned, just waiting. There was previously um, some commerce here that I decided just to zone residential again. How's that bus stop doing? So the bus stop is getting crazy. It might be time for the metro. 200 people waiting. Uh, and I've seen it go even higher than that. And I'm sure as more and more people constantly move in, we're just going to only see that increase and increase. All right, there she is from up high. So this area is now called Stonegate. We have This is called Butler Hills. I really just want to call it Butler. And instead of Robin Hills, this should be Robin Heights. Don't know why that didn't update. There we go. All right, let's have a look at the traffic map. 84, 83. Looks okay. We're starting to get a lot more uh, busy work on this road in particular. I'm thinking maybe time for traffic lights up here is, is soon. This is, uh, yeah, it's getting pretty populated. 
Now down here, I was thinking we could do a little bit more with Crown Farms. Why not add to both industries, right? This is definitely has the capacity for more, I feel like. Uh, maybe I'll wait till daytime, because it's just a bit dark to start working on that right now. Power to the people. How hard is it to actually build a working power grid? Oh yeah, sorry. I was supposed to put that. Thanks for the reminder. I said I'd put down a new power plant. <laughs> that was the whole idea of building it like this. Okay. We'll move it up even further. No, we'll just go there then. So there we go. Oil power plant in position. So this oil is stored for seven weeks, I guess, automatically. And then I think it pulls from our own oil production to get more power in there. So I think it'll take oil directly from the tanks. I don't think it uses petroleum. I think it just uses straight up oil. Yeah, it's a shame that the terrain is so uneven. If we turn on contour lines, you know, it's just it's a pretty dramatic hill as we get down to the coast. So it just kind of makes things a little uneven. But what can you do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, but yeah, we could put something here as well. Um, let's see. Has this gotten more people working in it now? Yeah, 43. It's loving it. Educated, uneducated, 24 jobs. Perfect. Love to see it. Although there's a lot of people who ha are educated that don't have jobs there. The Petrochem plant. So this is a very long-looking building. It would fit in quite nicely at the back of the um, the power plant, thinking about it, actually. 30,000? Let's just do it. Let's just commit to it. I'm going to move this further back up, then. So they look like they're part of a unit now as well, to some extent. Now, I don't want to get too crazy with money because, uh, or so, sorry, because I'm starting to notice money is um, getting quite a lot lower. But this is a big investment, right? It's oil. We should be making tons of money, right? All right, let's speed up time. We have our train coming in. A lot of people mentioning how trains do go backwards in real life. Didn't know that. Always thought they needed an engine on both sides to do it. Not that, well, not to physically do it. I just thought, surely someone needs to be seeing where you're going. <laughs> Don't you? To an extent? I'd be terrified seeing a train coming backwards. I'd be like, they're not, like, you know, a car stuck on a crossing or something. There's no chance at that point. Hey, what's going on here? We've got a bus mangled inside of another one. The blue and red line are crossing over, literally. They're merging. They're forming the purple line. I'm guessing one will pull off before the other, will it? Oh, there we go. Haven't really seen that happen before. What a great city. Glad to hear it. So, traffic is okay. Yeah, so a lot of people are calling for a metro. I'm just a little worried about the money situation, so don't want to be putting down a metro just yet. But the idea would be that a metro will serve as a good go-between. So a lot of people basically are using this area here to get to Victoria. So Victoria Square is here. All the commercial districts and stuff going on. And that's great. Love to see it. That was the plan. But it's just the volume of people is just way higher than I thought. The getting on and off these buses. 75 are on these ones already. Even going back out the other way. Which is great. You know, our buses are being used. Happy to see it. I've increased the amount of buses. All the, Like, I've done that a few times now. And they're using the bus lanes. It's not really causing a traffic problem or anything. It just feels like people are waiting a long time. So, you know, ideally want to have people constantly moving. Oh, the other thing is just that this stop is just so ridiculous. Because so many people wait here. Instead of just going there, that's all these buses are really doing is carrying people from here to there. So it's super inefficient. It's a waste of buses. So that's another little problem that we've got to fix. But like I said, I'm just going to pile onto the population, wait for money to sort of come up a bit, and then we'll do some of that metro stuff. Happy with this area, though. It seems to be coming along as planned. The Hawthorne residence. Yeah, perfect. Just sounds bougie, doesn't it? The Hawthorns. No traffic. Yep, yeah, all good. Just letting that simulation play out for a bit. How are we doing um, industry-wise now? Petroleum is filling up. Da -da -da. Yeah, we're already have enough workers, and we just have to wait for more stuff to be produced. Okay, it's totally good. Not making any money, though, yet. We are starting to make plastic, so I guess that's the other thing. We could now have storage for plastic if we wanted to. Or for something else. Not enough fuel. Oil stored for three weeks. They should get it from nearby, right? I would assume. They better not be importing it. I'll be really annoyed if that's the case. The whole point of setting up our own oil industry is that we don't have to pay anyone for it. You just take it from our thing. This is on balance. It's at 65% full, so just take it from there. Or take it from the petroleum. Don't know which one to use, but I assume oil, not petroleum. All 
I like the look of the place, though. It's coming along nicely. All right, so... Just wondering if I should extend this road out. No, I don't think so. I think we could build a separate one a bit further down and start paving out our actual industry then. Because uh, there's no demand for people, there's a big demand for both of these, so we need just more jobs. Some more gerbs. Alright, let's start then. So, small industrial road. Go out to about there. We're gonna have to cut the power lines. Just pause time. It's kind of interesting that you could just link straight like that. Should it, though, is the question. Probably not. Hmm. It's getting a bit messy already. Hang on, let's just undo that bit. Let's keep it kind of grid-like. For industry, I like to keep it pretty much like a grid. Yeah, so something like that's totally fine. And then just make sure that they all have proper zoning, places to work. That could just be a little, yeah, like that. All right, cool. So that'll be another little industrial estate for people to work in. Won't go too crazy with it at the beginning here, but let's just start filling it up. So this is all within the district, just about. Good thing I checked. So it should sp be technically specialized for oil, so the buildings will look a little different. It will be generic industry, though. Um, now we need to reconnect power back up, so let's just do something a little like this. Space already occupied. Oh, sorry. Let's do something like that for now. We can connect this up in a bit, or cut that in, cut that later when this starts to fill out. All right, so industry, let's go. I'm happy to have indus industrial buildings on this side as well. But let's do, I guess, this block. One of the blocks in here. So nice even block. I'll see how they get on. All right, speeding up time, where we just crossed 15,000. So we've gained 1,300 in this episode alone. We're doing good. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe another storage container thing down here. We could store up some of the plastics or something. Might be kind of nice. Another warehouse. I don't, like... I don't know if we need it though, you know? They're, they're making the plastic in here, and when it fills up, they'll just deliver it straight over here and send it straight off, you know? I don't think I actually need it. Until we make a unique factory, I don't think I need to really be storing it. The same kind of goes for this. Like, none of the trucks are in use. It just, when it gets made, a truck will appear, come out, deliver it in here, or ship it off. So, not really sure if we need to be doing that until we have, like, unique factories. And then it makes more sense to have, like, that buffer storage that those trucks, so a truck goes from here to here, and then that one goes to the unique factory when it's needed or exports it. That's the idea. But at the moment, we're just exporting everything, so why not? Why store it at all? Hey, it's starting to rain. I realized, well, I, I did it on purpose. I wanted the first few episodes to not have any rain because it was just raining all the time when I did my first like kind of trial run of the game with the mods. So I, I locked the weather so that we just had no rain happening. Oh yeah, I forgot about water, my bad. So that's funny to see it like kicking in straight away. It's been, uh, it's the year 2038. It hasn't rained in 20 years or more. There you go, you got your water. The power grid is so annoying. I look forward to CS2 where you don't have to really worry about it. All right, well, the electricity avail availability is through the roof. Do we need to tone that down at all? Yeah, bring that back down now to 100. And we can bring the water up to 100 as well now. Just leave it on what it should be, just in the middle there. All right, cool. There we go. Plasti mold. Little mini oil industry. Still a big demand for industry. We should wait for this to fill up a bit more. Zero jobs available, ten jobs available. All the uneducated workforce is taking them. Okay, we can actually I saw one there that didn't have anyone. 
Zero out of 32. We'll wait for that one to fill up before I add more. Don't want to go too crazy with it until they all determine where they need to go. We also have to make a new bus route that maybe goes out here. There's no bus lines that service this area. So there's the red line, which is kind of Belmont and Stonegate. There's the blue, li blue line north and blue line south, which kind of wraps around Victoria, Spruce, and Franklin. We don't really have anything in Crescent Valley or Thornton Heights. They can get the yellow line, I suppose. That kind of takes you around the city. Mm, yeah, so Spring Hills, Butler, and Stonegate don't really have anything, and Shoreline don't have anything either. So we'll need to set up a bus route for them. We could do it now, actually. It's nighttime. Might as well get to it. Let's make a new line. So, um... Hmm. So there's Commercial District right here. So yeah, starting a new line even there would be good. And maybe stopping near the industry. You could just walk in then, I guess, perhaps. Yeah, and then you can cross with this one. Does that make sense? No, not really. I don't know. I'm just trying to look at where should you come in and go back. I guess down here, actually. So yeah, maybe a bus stop. Somewhere in the middle there. And then I'll just see. If they get busy, they get busy. If they don't, then we'll stop using them. So another one here. There's a commercial area in this area right here. Actually, I don't think we need to stop there. <laughs> Put a stop outside this commercial area. Why not? Or you can go back up and try to link up with your buddy. I reckon we could do it this way. So that's a pretty big one, right? It goes around this way, down, in, back around, up and out. So we'll see how that goes. So that's like Butler, Stonegate, Spring Hills connections, like an outer route for the three districts. And then I guess people could probably just walk from in here. Don't think they need to be dropped inside of it. Uh, but let's give it a color. So, all right, sorry, I just had a, an alarm go off my phone there. Um, so. I've called it just the orange line. Let's see how that goes. And uh, we can kind of monitor the buses that come out and then adjust the amounts of them and stuff. So we'll wait for our first kind of orange bus to come along here in the evening in the rain. Don't know if I ever adjusted the um, actual speed limits and stuff in this place. I'll have to go over that and check. All right, let's have a look over back at Robin Heights and see how we're doing. So we have starting to fill out a bit more, I think. Yep, I've noticed these ones are starting to pop up. These are new. Seen some higher density places. And I've also... Did I save it? Oh, no, I don't think I did. So I was planning on doing this, and I just didn't actually end up saving it. Because I did test it to see if it would work. If we grab the node controller renewal, we can put in a node like here and make it a crossing. So it's really hard to see because it's nighttime, but that is a crossing right there. Let's just open this and close it. I don't know why I'm not getting my little light on my cursor. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like not appearing for whatever reason. Sometimes that happens. But anyway, um, so I just thought it'd be good because people are mentioning like you need more pathways and stuff. Like if someone comes out of this building, they've got a long way to go to get around to wherever they want to because they, they can't cross. So just having crossings, like, interspersed in the correct locations, I think, would help a lot uh, as well, if, if that's a problem. I mean, I'm not seeing it as a problem personally, but I can appreciate that it could be a problem. So a crossing there. Maybe just get another one here. Just use the nodes that are there already. Oh, crap. I made that a custom one. Let's make that a crossing. There we go. That just gives a gap in the medium, the median, so you can cross over if you need to. Should help things a bit. God, it's very gloomy and dark, actually, when that's when that's overcast. But the rain shouldn't last too long. How are we doing for jobs and people? We're up to 15... We're nearly at 16,000. By the way, 16,000 is our next milestone. And that's going to give us another 2x2. Two two, uh, some extra pathways and stuff. Water treatment crematorium. Which I know some people have been calling for. Train to Metro Hub. Track and Field Stadium. Timber Box Soccer Stadium. Money seems to be okay. We're kind of evening out. Let's see if we can ship off some of the petroleum. Although it seems like some of it is being shipped off every now and then. And we should be selling our plastic whenever we make it. Whenever this kind of thing fills up 20 tons and then it gets shipped out of here into the cargo terminal. 
Let's try to get a boost in money. Let's go empty this for a moment and see what happens. So there we go. Trucks are being made. They're coming out this way. That's funny. They actually have to go, excuse me, around this way anyway. Oh my god. Well, that's no good. I'm going to have to figure out what to do about that. This seems to be a sunken in part of the road there. I'll, have to, I'll fix it later. I don't see that when cars just turn right, though. They don't do that, do they? Oh, they do a bit, yeah. One of the nodes must be just too low down over there. All right, well, I'll get to that. I'll make a note of it. All right, so we just money just jumped up immediately. I don't know if that's because it just immediately got put on the train, or do you have to wait for the train to go off map? But money did just take a massive jump up, so I'm going to assume that's from the selling petroleum. I assume. All right, cool. Let's have a look as well really quickly with unique factories. So we just unlocked household plastic factory. So mixing petroleum and plastic. Oh, shit. I didn't realize they work together like that. Oh, we should do that instead then. <laughs> so it costs 50,000. Tech vinyl household plastics are renowned for their durability and practical design. The household plastic factory requires petroleum and plastic special goods for the manufacturing of household plastic products. And they can be placed outside of the industry area if you want. But why, why would we do that, right? We obviously want to do that here. Uh, yeah, actually, it could go right there. That'd be nice. So we'd have to be shipped down there and then get made and then sent back out to the rail terminal. Hmm. A little messy, I suppose. I mean, putting it somewhere like here or here would be great, but it just doesn't really fit in. What about down here? So... The flow of traffic, trucks come out, deliver their stuff into this one, then this comes out and delivers in there. It's a bit on the, everything seems to be on the wrong side of the road, really. I think, yeah, let's just try it here. We can always move it if we need to. Big plastic factory. Ah, there is the little drill that's blocking me from getting right into the edge there. How are we doing resource-wise? Got a little dry patch here, I would say. I would say move this out. You guys take that end there. Upkeep is 480 a week, cost 50,000. All right, let's go. Then we got a little message about that one. Plastic bags, bottles, and containers as far as the eye can see. Let's just hope they don't end up in the ocean. Dream for a green city. All right, cool. And now as we're starting to... Hey, we just became a big city. Just like that. We just gained 3,000 population or thereabouts. 2,300, right? Liberal arts campus area for college. Visiting scholars for campuses again. Yep, there's lots of stuff to put down. I'll have to figure out where I want to kind of place some of these things. Floating garbage collectors. Maybe we can clear up some of that pollution in the water. A train to Metro Hub, large water tower, crematorium. That's a big one. Because our now we can empty out the graveyards effectively. To be honest, I'll probably just leave that one there. That's a fine graveyard to have. But this one, too close to the river and stuff. It's a bit strange. Crematorium somewhere over, like, in some industrial area or whatever would be probably a better idea. I, to be honest, I've, I've never been to a crematorium. I have no idea where you'd place them in a city. I imagine... Well, I don't know. I was going to say on the outskirts or something, but I don't know. You guys can let me know where you think it should go. Yeah, it's going backwards, and it's got two big containers on it. Transporting cargo. The load is at 7% on both both of them. So not much. Not much. So now what we should hope to see... Let's just put this on balance. Let it do whatever. What we should hope to see is... The plastics we make... Which is how much. I don't know how much output we make. We make 16 barrels of petroleum per week, apparently. Don't know if that's accurate. Because it might just be counting what we just sold. So for sure, though, we're making... And we're not importing anything. That's perfect. So, oh, you can't actually, right? You can't import petroleum or plastic. You can import oil. People mentioned that to me. They said, hey, if you're worried about running out, you can actually just import oil and then refine it into different things to keep your industry growing, which is really good to know. I didn't know that. Um, I just assumed you couldn't because it was a natural resource. Four barrels, and then the output is 16. Is that really the conversion rate? And then two tons in, zero tons out of plastic. I don't know. We'll have to just see. But maybe we'll just tone this way down. And we'll just let this fill up with hopefully plastics and petroleum, and then see how we get on. We might need another plastic factory. I just don't know. So 2,080 per week is what's made here. And it's 2,080 per week, which is made of petroleum. So we have twice as much petroleum as plastic. Do we need an even amount of both? 22 barrels, 22 tons. It seems like it. Just kind of getting a feel for that. So we'll just have time to play. I'm sure we'll um, start cranking stuff out soon. So these guys are going to make their stuff, come out into the road, curl probably around this way, 
And then I guess go down there, turn, deliver stuff in. Hmm, okay. Need for industry is continuing to rise and grow, so let's do a little bit more down this way. And then we can take a look and see if our orange bus route is being used at all. Yeah, there's people waiting here. It's good to see. It's a nice healthy amount, I would say. Not too much. God damn, that's loud. <laughs> and also, what was with the way he drove out on the pathway? Hmm, these people are waiting a while for this bus, though, I would say. And there's a taxi going by. Man, it's rare that we see those guys. Transporting a passenger to the pharmacy. Dude, where are the buses? This, oh, zero vehicles are out right now. That's why. Bus. Oh, because we can't do buses. We have to do biofuel. It must have defaulted to a bus, a regular one. Yeah, it's got to be biofuel because we only have a biofuel depot. So we'll do a biofuel bus. They'll start rolling out now. Good to catch that one. That can be a bit of an issue sometimes. So we should see them coming out this way. Going up here doing a U-turn. There we go, finally. Let's follow it. As it gets onto its first journey. So line overview, uh, line details is what we want to see. So we can see how many people are waiting at each stop. 40, 22, 58, 11, 19. That's all right. Yeah, that's healthy, I would say. A healthy amount. Currently, eight buses are going to be rolling out during the day. Also seems like a good amount for the amount that we can see waiting. Maybe a little much. We'll see how it goes. Mayor just announced that our beautiful city won the Most Attractive City Award. Nice. Except for the fires. Don't look at the fires. And how's money? Money is coming up. We've gained about 100 grand. That's good. Now the next milestone, I think, is 20,000. We'll become a grand city. Where is this bus going, by the way? <laughs> it's taking a very weird route, isn't it? It's going, like, the opposite direction. There we go. It's starting it now. So this will be the first pickup then, I guess. There we go. 13 people on the bus. And it's about to be nighttime, so half of these buses are going to go back indoors. But I guess tomorrow will be the first proper day. I'll admit that stop is a little strange where it is. I'm waiting for it to get out to the commercial area, so the next turn now. Stick behind tourists, I think. Tourists are usually carrying little things. Going to the basketball court. So it's an uneducated adult. Nature tourist. Driving to the basketball court. Yeah, there you go. 28 passengers on the line. Love to see it. Should be dropping them off here now. Picking up 30. Dropping off 28. Or uh, who knows. Yeah, I don't know the exact amount. We've got 30 on board now. dropping these people off here. There are traffic lights here at the industry area, so they're able to walk over and go to work during the night. All right, cool. That was kind of cool to check. Let's just see then uh, speed limits. I was noticing some stop starting on that road. So 80 should be the limit. It's 50 in the commercial area. I actually kind of like the idea that we slow down in that area. Just a little bit, and then we go back up to 80. That's fine by me. You're entering a commercial zone, you know? That's cool. Yep, back to 80 then here. It's not corrected. And looks like we're fine then, everywhere else. 80 doesn't mean do 80, by the way. It's the limit, okay? <laughs> there we go. Speed people up a bit. I'll just do 60 around the smaller industrial roads. All right, what do you got for me? My favorite fish is hashtag salmon. At Mayor, what's yours? What's my favorite salmon or um, fish? I'd probably have to agree. Salmon is probably my favorite, yeah. I like um, like fish and chips in England is really nice. Like battered fish, battered cod, I guess. And chips, hake can be quite nice too. But yeah, salmon would be my go-to for sure. Or calamari, if that counts. I don't know if that counts as fish. All right, owner petrochemical plant delivering household, delivering 100% of products from the petrochem plant, right? So that's plastics to the plastic factory thing here. So let's see how much we get. So we currently have four tons. 
A hundred percent load from this truck is 16 tons, apparently. No, sorry, uh, was it four tons already? If it was, then it's 16. Nice. All right, well, the factory is working. We slowed its production rate. We can bring this up now. See how we get on with 75% as we're making our plastic products. Maybe this should change to be plastic products. That's plastics. That's not what we want. We want unique factory products. But I don't think we need it. We just ship it. But if you can help me out with any of that information, let me know. Because I am just a little unsure about it, you know. Oh, crap. I'm going to have to change it this way. I'm sick. Just leave it the way it is. Alright, looking good. Oh, yeah. That was something I wanted to do, which was just upgrade that road there. Just because then it looks a bit more like a built-up area now. I think it looks a bit better. All right, we have a demand for residential. I can't believe it. Is Butler completely filled out? It is. Yeah, it's looking nice. And we've got all this room here. I wasn't... Ooh, we're getting a bit of traffic, though, building up. I think I was saying that this would be a good location for traffic lights, and I think it's time. Uh, there we go. Junction, traffic lights. All right, that should control things a bit. All right, lights have changed. Off you go. Yeah, that's a bit better. That's still a bit of an issue, though, the way they're turning to go, I guess. Cool. All right, 16,500. So that was a huge population gain. It seems like we've relatively handled it without massive, massive issues. This is a bit probably the big problem area, right? So a lot of people using this road to get in and out of Victoria Square, I'd imagine. Yeah. Sort of a connection point from Victoria to sort of car... Oops. That hit at the exact same time another alarm went off my phone. Um, Robin Heights and Carlos. So the university in Robin Heights, like that kind of getting over to that area from Victoria Square. All right, the uh, oil industry is leveled up yet again. Oil industry storage, a toy factory now is another thing, and a large oil pump. So the large oil pump seems to be four small oil pumps put together. There it is. Yeah, so we've got one here, right? Small, small oil pump. And then there's the large oil pump, which seems to be... Yeah, it says it. A line of four pumps extracting materials together. And then we've got this one, which is a drilling rig, which we just started using. Then there's the large version of that. Then we've got offshore drilling platforms. So we need level five for that bad boy. Uh, then what do we have? We still have the pyrolysis plant, the petrochem plant. We have our crude oil storage, crude oil storage cavern, which I guess is even bigger. Then what do we have here? Oil industry storage. That looks so cool, that building. Oh my god, it's actually really small. I thought it was going to be huge. Two dome shelters for storing oil industry raw materials. Storage building can be placed outside of the area. I didn't know they could be placed outside the area, actually. Capacity, 300,000. The capacity of this is 500,000. Electricity, 960 per kilowatts. Wow. 960 kilowatts for that. That's crazy. This can do... This only does 80 kilowatts. And its capacity is... Really good, like 300 under 500. 240 water. What's the water on this one? 240. Okay, so the same amount of water. So for the extra 200,000 capacity, yeah? For that extra capacity, you're spending 900 kilowatts of power. Or just under. Just, yeah. 880. That's insane. I don't know why you'd do that. 880 and you get four extra trucks and 200,000 capacity. Screw that. I'll just build more of these. It looks nice, though. It would be nice to have the variety, visually. I wonder how the commute up here is going, how people get here and if they're okay. We're seeing a busy, busy area here as well. Is this controlled by traffic lights? Yeah, that's all right, though. If it's controlled by traffic lights, I'm sure things are flowing. Not getting too terribly backed up, at least not yet. Okay, we just have to keep an eye on that, but we want to flesh out more industry up here. There's still demand for it. Um, yeah, maybe we could actually change this bit to remove some of the zoning. Just to give more space in here. That kind of works. This is in the way slightly. Okay, so let's just free up more zoning now for industry. So let's do that. Um, 
So the only way they have in is this one area. That That's obviously just like a problem to only ever have one area in. Is this a set of traffic lights as well? Or are people just... No, they're just parking there. So people said that the par people parking on the side of the road can cause like delays. I don't... Is that true? I haven't noticed people driving slower because there's parking. But we could turn that off. But maybe, maybe they do go by a little slower. They're not actually blocking a lane. Like both lanes get used. Maybe they go by slower though. I'm not sure. All right, cool. Check our industrial area now, just generally. Profitable, 330 employees. We need 400 to get to the next tier. We also need another 3,000 units. So that's going to take a little while to get to. Uh, but yeah, good to see. Good to see. Hopefully these um, plastic products will start making us good money. One truck is in use at the moment, 2,400 in value. Okay. Money does seem to be good. We're gaining. So yeah, in the next episode, two things I'm going to work on, I think, is building out the park. And then also building out the metro connection. Now that money is okay, I'm more confident to do that uh, without being too scared. And we want to put more strain on everything. That was the I whole idea of this. Is like Let's just rapidly boost population and see what happens. And to be honest, I thought we got a bigger backup than we have. It hasn't been too bad. And I wanted to kind of pad out that industry as well, but I haven't done it yet. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to have to be kind of it for this episode. So I would say fairly successful. Maybe just here at the end, we'll have a little look around our new Butler Village. Butler Town. Looks nice. And then obviously down to our community pool, our sauna again. Our child healthcare center, which I definitely didn't say anything really weird about at the beginning. Um, visitors last week, five child users in this, child care users in the city 17. We have a little path connecting the two areas. Little park area there. Looking good. Car park. Some houses at the back. Is there... Oh, there's room for more. And then we have our cafe and restaurant here. Sidewalk cafe. A couple parks. People said don't stack too many parks next to each other. Ah, it's fine. Land value. There we go. We haven't looked at that before. Let's turn off the districts, maybe. Right. Yeah, it's kind of nice, actually, seeing. Yeah, pretty good land value up around Butler. They're loving it up there. They've got everything they need. What else do we need? Natural resources. We've seen that before. Leisure. Some gaps around this area. So there was, a, there is meant to be a park in this place. So that would be kind of good for them. But leisure-wise, Butler, Victoria Square, Spring Hills, they're all covered. And we're going to have a nice big city park here. I was thinking of doing a na nature reserve. But it doesn't seem quite right for this place. I think a city park would make more sense. A nature reserve, I think, is really great if you're going to go up on, like, hills and things. Because you've got, like, little campsites from what I was looking into. Whereas a city park has more, like, that's what you'd expect in, like, a central park type thing. Uh, like, you know, bathrooms, <laughs> for instance, and stuff like that. Um, a bit more built up, rather than a nature reserve, which is a bit more like, it's like a dirt trail, and people, like, put up little campsites and stuff, and it's a bit more low-tech, I guess. All right, not too bad. I'm actually pretty happy with the flow rate that's going on here. What are these blue trucks? Cargo... Oh, yeah, they're going to the post office, transporting mail to the post office. Oh, does it come in from the train? Oh, Interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. So these trucks come out of the cargo terminal and deliver mail to the post office. So we have two post offices in our city currently. One over in Robin Heights, or over that way, sorry. And then one down here by Franklin. Yeah, so Franklin Heights has one, and then Carlo Valley basically has one. They both seem to be going the same way. Oh, they made it through the lights. Good on you. Might have to do some lane connection stuff on those roundabouts because I feel like um, they're not being fully used, utilized correctly. That other truck just overtook that one. Hey, and he's going way faster. Is he lighter? No. Why is he going faster? <laughs> this is. Bit of a mad lad behind the wheel on that one. Same vehicle, same destination. One's just going faster. <laughs> that is so interesting to see. I just never would have thought that'd be the case. I thought they all just kind of behaved the same. And he's about to pull in. Yep, he just pulled in. And this one is just dropping half of its mail. Now he's going off map. Cool. Yeah, interesting. All right, that's going to have to be it. Fun little journey around the city. We've now built this place up quite su uh, substantially and significantly. Money seems to be good. We're gaining. Population is now evening out at about 17,000. Um, we still have zoned area in here that needs to be filled. And obviously, as this levels up and gets bigger... Actually, not that much. But as it levels up and gets bigger, um, it can house more people. 
so then we'll start to see the population rise even further. Not that I'm trying to push it any harder right now. For a little while, we can just cope with what we have, sort out any problems, and then continue to build on our way to Grand City, uh, which is 20,000. So we're another 3,000 3, population off that milestone. All right, that's going to have to be it for this episode. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.